Biobalance HealthCast, episode 167, Anxiety and Hormonal Imbalance. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. Uh, in our last episode, we did something that we like to do occasionally. We always invite you, if you have comments or questions, to contact us directly with those comments and questions, and we'll try to respond to you. And we do respond through emails to all of those that we get. But periodically, we, w- we want to take some that are representative of a category of patients that, that Kathy gets so many people who present this way or have these concerns or these particular questions that, that are articulated well enough by one of these emails that they can serve as a case example. We're, we're certainly not going to take a podcast for every question that comes in, but when they fall in clusters or identifiable categories, we want to do that. Or if there's something that's truly uniquely unusual, mm-hmm. we want to respond to those mm-hmm. as well. So we did that in the last podcast, and we're going to do it in today's podcast. Uh, we received a letter from uh, a lady named Melissa who, who articulated a lot of concerns that she had. Uh, and Kathy was so touched by what she had to say that she wanted to take this episode mm-hmm. to respond. So if you will indulge me for a minute, I'll read parts of the letter that Melissa sent in, and then Kathy will talk about her reaction and response mm-hmm. to what she's hearing. Mm-hmm. This is my last attempt before believing I'm just crazy. In 2012, I started having terrible hot flashes and very heavy periods with large clotting. I went in for an exam and a pap smear. Immediately after my pap, I would have pain during orga- orgasms. My OB suggested Novasure will fix the pain and the periods. Uh, I had the procedure December of 2012. I did okay. Exactly when I should have had my period one month later, I had panic attacks instead. Uh, No eating, no sleeping. This lasted until May 29th when I had a hysterectomy. All gone except for the ovaries. and, And by the way, that's a... That's a controversial topic among gynecologists Mm -hmm. who perform hysterectomies. Mm -hmm. Do you take the ovaries every time or do you not? Mm -hmm. Why would you leave them? What would be the benefit? You you can speak to that Mm -hmm. when when you get there. Uh, No eating. Let's see. Uh, My panic attacks went away. They did the pathology. I had necrosing polyp in uterus thermal damage, in uterus thermal damage, and post panic uh, post tubal ligation ablation syndrome and pelvic congestion syndrome. That's a, that's a mouthful. Yeah, I'll have to explain I did that. so good in June after my hysterectomy. Seven whole days out of and free. I cried at night. I was so happy. I was not on any meds. Then I took a turn for bad again. Not panic, but three weeks of anxiety, depression, bloating, and then one good week. I literally have one good week a month, and it's a cycle. I've been diagnosed at the Mayo Clinic with generalized anxiety d- disorder, cyclic, and also my OB said she thinks I'm an ovulatory. I don't get it, nor do I know how to survive like this. I have a prescription for Lupron for three months. They say that if I do so much better mentally in menopause, that if I... They'll take my ovaries. They'll take my ovaries. I'm desperate for someone who will explain what might have happened to me, why it's cyclic. I started cognitive behavioral therapy. I hope it will help. I've had the best thing that ever happened to me ripped away. The ability to be a good, mentally checked-in mother... I have been to so many doctors that I would be afraid to even make another appointment. Would your office specialize in this, uh, or should I go to a reproductive in- endocrinologist? Mm-hmm. So she's really burdened, and she's having panic attacks and anxiety issues. She's doubting her own mental stability. Mm-hmm. She's not finding answers from multiple doctors and clinics that she's been to. Mm-hmm. And your thoughts are that all of the descriptors that she puts in her email tend to fall in the categories of anxiety and hormonal imbalances. Yes. And so you want to speak specifically to those things. And that's one of the things. We've talked about anxiety and hormonal imbalances before, but there's a couple things that need to be addressed here. And one is that um, sometimes when we do hysterectomies, we just take the blood flow to the uterus, but sometimes the, the blood flow to the ovaries, which is where our hormones are from, is compromised at some point. Therefore, sometimes the ovaries don't work as well or go into menopause earlier than they might if they'd been left alone. Now, she clearly needed a hysterectomy for bleeding Mm -hmm. and for pain. So I have no, I have no, I mean, this doctor seems like he was working with 
absolutely everything he had to try to make her better. Right. However, an unintended outcome of doing a hysterectomy that he thought would be curable or she thought would be curable, I'm not sure if it was a he or, he or she, but is sometimes that the ovaries don't function as well. Mm -hmm. Now, what she describes, the three weeks of feeling terrible and one week feeling better is a PMS description. Mm -hmm. What that would say to me is at the one thing the ovary is still making is estrogen. Okay. Because estrogen is usually in PMS, we talked about that last time, when PMS, when someone has PMS, they have an elevated estrogen and no progesterone to balance. Usually it's like this, but the progesterone is very low, so patients feel anxious from high estrogen. So okay. it could be that. That's one possibility. I don't have enough lab to tell if that's the case. And in that case, Lupron might help because that would stop all the hormones and then they take your ovaries out. But I think there's another component. Oftentimes, we don't feel PMS from high, estro high estrogen and, pro and low progesterone. We have that periodically through our lives. But we don't feel it early on because we got plenty of testosterone. Testosterone's a buffer. Testosterone takes away the sting of PMS and makes us much more normal. Mm -hmm. So I, I would guess, because I don't know for sure, that her testosterone has been gone for a while Mm -hmm. And that's why she was having some anxiety issues. Her progesterone's been gone, which is one of the sources of the severe bleeding, besides the polyp, is when the estrogen is elevated and there's no progesterone. And, and she still has ovaries that are still making estrogen, and it's an imbalance. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> before doing something like Lupron, which would take away all her hormones, and if it's related to testosterone, would make it worse. Mm -hmm. It would take that little bit of testosterone that she, pos that she has and make it even lower, I would try replacement of systemic testosterone to see if you can buffer this reaction until she hits menopause without having to go through yet another surgery. Okay. I ha when I had my ovaries out, I had terrible migraines. I had all the symptoms that I have on our questionnaire, basically everything after, uh, before, and they were worse after I had my ovaries out. And I thought, They'll be better. My migraines will be better. They were worse because my buffer system, my testosterone was gone. I had made just a tiny bit, just enough to keep me from being 100% miserable. When my ovaries were gone, I was worse. So I don't want to suggest that you go through that before trying testosterone replacement. And there's no other way to test it, really, is for us to, for you to have your testosterone level tested and then find a doctor willing to replace testosterone so that you can get your total testosterone above 30. That's so, the key. So she says in her email that she's 36. Yeah. Is, is that uh, within the range typically of people losing their, their testosterone? It's early. Having it, it's, it's early, but most people don't have any all these other complications. of these things going on. So her ovaries were probably a little bit malfunctioning just earlier than other people. It's genetic or it's stress or it, it's... It's just a hormone imbalance that inherited or stress related. Yeah. So toxins, nutrients, sure, sure. you know, things like that. So it, all of these things in our environment affect it. I can't tell you one thing that would cause it, mm -hmm. but we know that people do do this early. I mean, my migraine started at 37, 38. Mm -hmm. So I was already experiencing a testosterone loss and now, right. and ever since I've had testosterone, they're gone. So for her, her symptoms of anxiety I would suggest getting her lab tested to see what, sh what her estrogen is, what her progesterone is, what her testosterone is, and her FSH and LH to see where they are. Is she in menopause or is she still cycling? Is she still making estrogen? But the reason it's cy cyclic is partially because it's too much estrogen, the progesterone is not being produced from day 14 through 28, that's what your doctor said, and ovulatory means no progesterone which to me means PMS if you've got plenty of estrogen. Right. Now, testosterone, I believe, would buffer this and take away your anxiety. It has in many of my patients, and I've been very happy with that. Another reason, just for everybody else, to have anxiety when you're going through this, say, 40-something in most people, is that <clears throat> when your FSH and LH surge said she had hot flashes, that could be from low testosterone or low estrogen. Those surges destabilize your brain. And when they destabilize your neurotransmitters, we either feel anxious or we feel depressed 
or we feel irritable. All of those things are from our hormones or the lack of them causing us to have uh, a disrupted brain uh, homeostasis. So that's what that could be. Say we did her lab and she had no estrogen and she had no testosterone and no progesterone. Her ovaries had already gone through menopause. Mm -hmm. Then basically her FSH and LH surges were trying to push her ovary into, ovaries into making those estrogen and testosterone. That would destabilize her brain and make her anxious all the time. It's, it's also on that fuzzy line between physiological and psychological. Mm -hmm. uh, all the things that Kathy's saying about making the physiological changes may be a, a sufficient thing to do to make the anxiety go away and not come back. Mm -hmm. But there's also the potential, if you've suffered from anxiety for a long time, that you've learned certain patterns of hypervigilant and thought escalation that will get in your way. And so mm -hmm. the cognitive uh, therapy is a strategy that I mm -hmm. would recommend that you continue no matter what you do mm -hmm. because you need to learn the techniques of thought stopping and thought regulation. You need mm -hmm. to work on some uh, reality testing scripts to test the source of your anxiety, like, like if you have a, a phobic reaction to snakes or something, mm -hmm. uh, to, to be able to say, there aren't any snakes here. I just saw one on television, but that's through the TV, and I'm not, you know, in danger. And and there there's a methodology for regulating your thoughts mm -hmm. that decreases the surge of anxiety. Mm -hmm. So so I would say it's it's a two pronged attack. One is to do the medical interventions that you're talking about, which may make the issue go away. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you've habituated your thought processes and your reaction processes, you're gonna have to retrain them, and mm -hmm. and the cognitive therapy will help you do that. Tell, what if most of my patients, I ask my patients what they're anxious about. Yeah. And generally. Some generalized anxiety means they don't know. They don't they know. They just feel a level of hypervigilance. They right. feel a level of awareness. They're waiting for the other shoe to fall. They're nervous. They, they don't breathe deeply. I mean, th there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that they can work on that could be helpful if they teach themselves to do it. Okay. I was just thinking of the, the anxiety that is overwhelming most of the patients say then if one more thing happens i'm right. fine i'm yeah. holding it down i've yeah. i've i've done I'm this white knuckling my way through yeah, life I'm, yeah i'm 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 i've calmed myself down so that i don't have bad behavior in front of my children my boss mm -hmm. my husband and then all of a sudden one more thing right. happens right. and then i lash out and that's probably common in people you talk to what's well, the kind of stuff that happens in road rage yeah you know i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine i'm gonna kill you <laughs> Literally, get out right. of my way. Right, and so, and so I hear this a lot, yeah. and I hear that basically testosterone's the key. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's estrogen. Sometimes I have to replace both. Mm -hmm. But in this in instance, I believe that she probably still has some estrogen. Mm -hmm. So in, I believe that that overwhelming just anxiety when I wake up, anxiety when I go to sleep, right. and that one one thing that can cause you to just lose it, kind of anxiety, and I don't have a name for that. I guess I'd call it hormone loss anxiety. Mm -hmm. That the FSH and the LH are surging all the time, and then they just need one little one little disruption to go over the top. Okay, why are they surging? They're surging because the ovary's not making the hormones it should. So right. the brain is making FSH and LH to push the ovaries to make estrogen and testosterone. Mm -hmm. And it's that, that elevated level of FSH and and LH are causing destabilization in the brain mm -hmm. and making it irritable mm -hmm. and unpredictable. So those surges do that. Yeah. Some people get hot flashes, some people get anxiety, some people get both. And usually the people that have this from FSH and LH surges and not from PMS get it more at night than they do during the day. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I ask people to see if I can Right. Basically, by history, locate. Are you more anxious at night? Are you able to sleep? Mm -hmm. Or do you wake up with anxiety attacks and sweating and, yeah. and worrying? Right. That's often from a surge of FSH and LH from lack of estrogen and, mm -hmm. and testosterone. So those are the people that, that I deal with, and those are people that get better. Yeah. Also, the people that have PMS kind of symptoms, they can't tell because they don't have a uterus. Those those patients get better with both testosterone and progesterone. That, that's so fascinating because what I was trained 
to do about anxiety attacks and panic attacks and how to understand them and how to frame a conversation about them didn't include any of that physiological stuff that mm -hmm. you know, which often is the total source of the anxiety. And if mm -hmm. you can regulate that, the anxiety will go away. And then you just have to learn to live again. Yeah. Because that's when you need counseling, because then you have to learn to live without anxiety running you. Then what runs you? <laughs> well, you've learned some compensatory strategies to survive. You know, mm -hmm. like I can hold it together in mm -hmm. front of my husband or my boss or my kids, but then I have to have a place where I can go and vent and release. Uh, people that have trauma histories have these mm -hmm. kinds of anxiety issues. And if they have the physiological breakdown plus the trauma history, mm -hmm. it, it's exacerbated. It's a, it's a bad combination. Yeah. And I do see that a lot as well. Yeah. And uh, this, this is one of those things that crosses the boundaries of one specialty, obviously. Right. And it is, that's why... Melissa has had a lot of antidepressant treatment because people are seeing anti-anxiety and antidepressant treatment for the symptoms that she has where when we when it's not just the symptoms it's what caused it and it has something to do cyclically with her with her ovaries or it wouldn't be cyclic. Well, and that's one of the benefits of having a treatment team. I mean, actually that's the way Kathy and I began to work together is we had overlapping clients that gave us permission to do consults mm -hmm. and began to talk about how our specialties could merge or, or frame or understand what was going on in order to help those individual patients. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you can find that sort of cooperative venue where the, the psychological component and the physiological component are both being treated by people that talk to each other mm -hmm. and talk to you, I think it's the best of all worlds. I agree, and and many times when you uh, find anti-aging doctors or age management doctors, you'll find that you'll find that they have someone they refer to for, or even as a component within their office, right? Or someone you know, within their office that does yeah. does cognitive therapy. Yeah, and we've we even I even saw some of these lectures about that mm -hmm. at the last. AMMG meeting, so that's coming to the forefront, but it isn't coming very fast. Right. So it's hard to find teams like that. And I'm glad you said AMMG because, uh, in terms of where this person is located, we don't know. It comes in through the mm -hmm. internet. Mm -hmm. But one of the ways that she might be able to find a doctor who is knowledgeable and understanding of these issues and the treatment protocols mm -hmm. that you are describing, American Age Management Medicine, Medis medicine uh, group, group. agemed.org, and they will have a list of members who, who are affiliated with their organization who mm -hmm. know this stuff and practice uh, the, this specialty and in their And who will area. listen and who will actually think more about the hormonal basis of it right. than just looking at the outcome of that hormonal imbalance, which is the anxiety. So it's a different way to look at it. Yeah. Sometimes you're looking in the window, sometimes you're looking out. You know, it's, it's a different way to look at a problem. And, and that's why, what I do often is so different than what other mainstream doctors do because I just have a different view of it. Mm -hmm. And I've had to walk the walk. I've yeah. had to walk through this. For your own survival. For my own survival. Yeah. And now I have thousands of patients who are now surviving well, just like I am, and have a, an, a full and healed life. Doesn't mean we don't get older. Doesn't mean we don't look older. Doesn't mean we don't, you know, doesn't don't mean you don't age. have problems. Doesn't mean <laughs> but your my life to is cope easy. With those problems. It just means that yeah. it means that my life is more like it used to be before my ovaries gave up. Yeah. Or it got taken out. Yeah. So I I want to give you hope. I want to give people who have had this type of feeling and this type of journey to look for somebody to take care of them, we have a resource for you to take care of doctors that will hear you that should be able yeah. to manage this. Now, I can't speak for every doctor, but this group is excellent, and they should be able to find you a doctor that would be close to you that could handle this kind of, mm -hmm. of an issue. And then you take, you do your own summary that very specifically what happened when in, in a list and take that with you so that they don't have to go through all, all the records, although taking the records with you is helpful so that they can, they can look at them. So, Melissa, I think that what you have basically is some type of either testosterone or progesterone hormone imbalance that is causing or helping your anxiety disorder. And I think that should be where you look first. Now, Lupron is a treatment for hormones. I just don't know if that's going to be the answer. It could be. 
Well, and she can't know. Not having seen you or your medical labs, uh, she can't give you a prescription or treatment protocol. But what she can do and is doing is saying, in terms of my general knowledge and experience from years of doing this, the way you describe your presenting symptoms, this is what I think. And so go find a doctor who knows this stuff, share that information with them and see what they think. Your doctor's taken it pretty far. I mean, he's, he or she has been very advanced in how they think about this. Not every OBGYN would do that. Right. So I, I, I have no criticism of how no. they've proceeded at all. I just think that there's a different answer than, than they found so far. Than they found so far. All right. So once again, thank you so much for listening to our health case. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.